paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. One of my favorite guests is back, Melissa Sanova. Um, and uh, before that, let me do my ad. Folks, if you can leave me a five-star review or some kind of review on iTunes or wherever you listen, that would be great. I will see you October 17th at Ann Arbor Comedy Club. Also, coming May 16th, a new theater date for Miami. Um, so uh, Jessa Reed told me to uh, go out and do things on my own, so that's what I'm doing. And... Uh, uh, I think that's it for now. So uh, Melissa is going to talk to us about her uh, book, Tarot Elements, that I already have in my grubby little hands. Uh, tarot <laughs> reader extraordinaire, uh, Melissa Sanova, how are you today? I'm good, honey. How are you? I'm very good. But, you know, we were laughing because this first part uh, we're taping for the second time because, uh, and also, I forgot this in the announcements, she's coming to L.A. What is the date in L.A.? <laughs> Um, I'm going to be in Los Angeles from October 12th until the 20th. Okay. Now I wondered if that was my phone because I just heard. <laughs> was I... that? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Okay, <laughs> folks, if you're hearing a buzzing, here's, well, here's where I think I feel like, and I tweeted this to my friends that do conspiracies at Tinfoil Hat, um, technology is going nuts, not breaking, but. Uh, I had to replace last week's podcast at the last minute. Like things just keep switching. Do you feel like that's going on? Yes. And uh, also in my day job, technology has been completely bonkers. I actually took a half day today because I was about ready to freak out because my computer was giving me so many problems. So, no, I'm completely with you, sister. And they're not uh, fixable problems. It's like people know I have the tire problem that my car goes crazy. Tire light comes on like it's an emergency. Uh, tires don't need air. Then it turns off. It's very weird. I keep watching, too, on the news. The newscasters keep losing their feed or the person can't hear them all suddenly. Like that. Is That's that so weird. Yes. Did you hear you know, that? No, my phone is fine. Okay. I wonder what that little sound is. I don't know. It sounds weird. like a train. Is it me? All right. My sound is off. Okay. Maybe it's know. our electricity. The all rise right. of the machines is what it is, Karen. I believe that. It's predicted as a Terminator. It's time. It is time. And you know what? I've not been so kind to my printer. So I think if that turns into a fight, I could lose. And uh, oh, they'll God find my, my body covered in printer ink. Um, so first <laughs> of all, now we talk about this later in the podcast, but you are coming to L.A. Give everybody dates, times, how they get a hold of you. What happens? Yes, I am so excited. I haven't been to Los Angeles for like 15 years. And I'm going to be there from October 12th until the 20th. Um, I'm doing private readings during the day. And then in the evenings, I'm doing um, private tarot parties. So this is when you get like 10 of your friends together and everybody throws in some money. And then um, I leave my charms and oracle cards for everybody to play with while I give readings to each of you one by one. And it's super fun. Um, and I'm really excited because I, I get to see some of my longtime clients that I've never met in person. Wow. So I get to do readings for them. And I still have some openings, but they're going pretty fast, um, which is cool. But I'm like, she yet. Um, I'm going to be a little busier than I expected. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. I love L.A. I'm going to be staying in North Hollywood, too. Awesome. So, yeah, awesome. the readings will be done in a in a coffee shop in NoHo. Oh, do you guys uh, say that or do you sound like a douche? No, people so say no ho. No ho. Okay. Uh, they say no ho. <laughs> yes, they do. And it's very funny because this weekend I'm on my way to a new uh, paranormal shop in, uh, it's actually Magnolia's Burbankish, which is right uh, alongside NoHo. And, uh, if I, if, it, if it's as good as they looked online and I was recommended to go there, uh, I might be doing a podcast from there too. And, uh, you should check it out. Um, okay. So let's get right to the book. Uh, Tarot Elements, very fascinating and different approach, uh, to getting readings or to doing readings. Can you tell us about it? Um, yeah, it started because I had a client call me who, I mean, I've had train wreck years, you know, where everything just goes wrong, mm -hmm. but I'd never had anything like this where both of her parents had passed away within three months of each other. 
and then she got a divorce and then she got fired and then she got in a car accident and became disabled. And it was like, yeah. And this is all happening within six months. And she called me and she was like, can you fix my life? And I was like, no, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd love to, but no, that's not how readings work. And then I couldn't stop thinking about her because I gave her like a very sad, pathetic pat on the head kind of reading. And I couldn't stop thinking about her. And I felt somehow beholden to her. Like I needed to help her figure this out. Right. And then I thought about how every problem that we have can be split into like five pieces, you know, like there's our home, there's our body, our mind, our heart and our soul. And that encompasses all of like, most of my readings are about sex, love and money, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And so if we were to break up her problems into tiny bite sized pieces, then I could, I could help her figure out her own stuff and help her fix her own life. So I called her, which is alarming to people when their tarot reader calls them <laughs> unprompted. I like, know. hey, I want to talk to you. And she goes, shit, what? I so. know. That is so true. Sometimes <laughs> I'll go, I'll text someone, hey, I was just thinking about you. And they're like, why? And everything's fine. Yeah, you have to put the codicil in. It's like when I felt, tell people I had a dream about them and they're like, Jesus Christ, what? I know, so, it's always bad. <laughs> it's always like that. But so I was like, can can you be my guinea pig? I want to workshop out these readings. Um so that we can walk through each part of your life and help you fix it. So we did. And it took like uh, six months or so. And first we did the home thing because she was in a, she was in a wheelchair using a wheelchair because of the accident. And she hated the house she was in, but it was wheelchair accessible. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know about a lot about uh, accessible housing, but a lot of it is complete crap um, because people don't like keeping up to the ADA compliance because it's expensive. So they don't like retrofitting their apartments to be compliant. So you pretty much get what you get. Um, and she was able to find a better place because, uh, she had a friend who was a real estate agent, you know, and the cards, the rating that we did for the house one said, you have supports here, you have friends that do this. And she was like, yeah, but I don't want to bother her because she'd had such a bad run of luck that every time she called her friend, her friend was like, uh, I, I don't know what to do for you. This is too much. It's too big. Or she didn't want to bother her friend, you know? Right. Because it gets, comes to a point you're like, I'm so sorry about your life, you know, and you don't really know what else to do. Mm-hmm. And I said, give your friend something to be able to help you. This is her job. So she was able to find her a really great place at a really great price that was accessible. So we knocked that one out. You know, uh, then, not not to yeah. shoot off topic, but it's like, no, when, you're fine. I'm still amazed. My place doesn't have elevators. It's only two floors, though. So it's mm-hmm. uh, but it it's always amazing to me when someone has a very uh, I know someone that just moved into a place with three floors and no elevators. And I'm thinking, Jesus. God, yeah, you yeah. know, accessibility yeah. should be the standard. It should be the standard of building, Make, making a place accessible to, to folks with disabilities. I agree. Um, is is fair. Mm-hmm. And it's not that it's not much more difficult to build a place um, that's accessible as to build an inaccessible place. So I just I don't get it. I don't. And it's one of so. those things where you'll hear people scream about it and stuff. But anyway, OK, so you started with the home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So we started with the home and then she didn't want to go to I mean, and I get this like I'm, there's no judgment here. She didn't want to go to physical therapy because she didn't feel good. And I totally get that. Like I've had days where I was like, I don't want to go to the doctor. I feel too bad. And I'm like, you know, if you she she had to go to physical therapy to get strong enough to stop using the chair. Oh. And I was like, it's time. You know, it's time to to start taking care of yourself physically. Um, and, you know, that's you know, a, that I was going to say. It sometimes uh, there's nothing wrong with me, and sometimes I have trouble getting out of bed. I can't mm-hmm. imagine in that state. But she, the physical therapy, got her. So she's not in the wheelchair anymore. No, she's not anymore. She uses a cane. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like a thing where she was just honestly like, "Fuck it." Yeah. You know, everything has gone wrong. I, you know, I'm stuck in this stupid chair. Fuck it. And I get that. I really do. I've had times where I have just been like, you know what? I'll just have a bad life and that's fine. And I, and I just kind of sit still for a while. And I think some degree of that is necessary, but you can't live there. Yeah. Like you can't, that's not a safe place to be all the time. And and she, so was, she was in the worst yeah. of it. She was in what you destroyed. <laughs> <She was>. Yeah. <clears throat> but finding a house in which she felt at home, really helped her emotional self because she was a nester and people who are nesters really need to feel safe in their home and they need to feel like they can 
just snuggle up and be safe. And she didn't have any of that. Mm. So once she had that aspect, her emotional self got a little better and her mood got a little better. And she was like, okay, I think I can tackle physical therapy now. Okay. And then at the same time, she started seeing a counselor for her emotional self. And, you know, we just kind of worked on each little part and the reading would just draw a map on here's what we need to do. Here are things that can support you. Here are things that are getting in your way. And here's what you have to grab onto and look forward to. And and each of them does that in a different way with a different part of your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it it's a very kind of kind prodding is how one of my clients <laughs> said it. Because she said, you know, it's not like you're not bullying me and you're not being like, I hate love and light people. Not because right. love and light is a bad thing. But sometimes you just need to have a bad day and be allowed to feel like crap. And sometimes you need to just be able to feel sad without somebody pushing. Yeah, it's all good. Optimism down your throat because it's disingenuous. Everybody has to have a bad day or you'll never have a good day. You know, it's just there's got to be balance. So it's a very gentle prodding of, okay, when you're ready and you want change, here's the way to figure out how to do it. And I even put readings in there because sometimes, like my friend, everything goes like garbage. Um, you don't know where to start. Like, mm-hmm. what's the best place to start? Do you start looking for a job or do you do you start, you know, trying to get your body in shape or do you look at your home or your spiritual self? Like, it's overwhelming, yeah. you know? Yeah. So there's a reading in there. There's I kind of put up like a basketball bracket on how, uh, <laughs> how to figure out which one to do first. And um, yeah. And I did have, you know, it's so funny. I hope I still have this listener. There was a listener that emailed me and uh, she was having like a bad, bad years, bad years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wonder about that sometimes because I know numerology goes in those nine years. You go in your nine year cycle. But I do think sometimes you can get a bad nine, like a bad nine years. And uh, I, man, I don't do math. And that's an even bigger reason for me to not know about math. Holy crap. (laughs) I can't imagine. Well, I mean, and, and they obviously the whole time would not be as bad as what happened to your friend. But it's just a downswing. Right. Right. You have your upswing, you have your downswing, which of course I think the main lesson we're all supposed to learn is to go with the flow, which is so much easier to say than do. So, um, so this is a great way when people read this book to break Break this down and sort of see where what they want to read, where they have to go to, and uh, I think it's just a great system. And do you call this like um, if somebody again called you like that, would you suggest they break this into so many readings or do it all in one? Or how? What would you suggest? I I always ask people to make things as simple as possible. Um, so I would ask them to break it up. But like even when someone calls for a reading, and it's not. Like they're just having a bad time. Mm -hmm. I encourage them to just simplify their life. Like if they're very depressed and are having or are having problems with anxiety or something, I encourage them to like make sure they eat good food and sleep Mm -hmm. and move their body once a day. And, um, you know, that's it. That's like make sure you do those three things. Make Mm -hmm. sure you're eating, you're sleeping and you're moving your body because sometimes you get so completely overwhelmed by the universe that all you can do is eat and sleep and move your body. And I don't think folks should feel judged for doing that because this is a really difficult time for a lot of people. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we have to be so forgiving of ourselves because I don't think that anybody really anticipated life being like this, you know, and when it gets overwhelming, we don't have the tools that we need to get through it alone. Yeah. So, you know, being very gentle with yourself is always a good thing. Uh, did, did you see on HBO that show years and years? No, I haven't. It's really fascinating and it's very, um, I loved it. I consumed it. Um, and it into the future and it's sort of it like if we don't fix things now and it hits on a whole bunch of political topics, but it's very interesting of, um, they have a character in there. Uh, they talk about the future sort of like the way we're going to become uh, half bionic or the computers are going to be within us or, and it's very fascinating and uh, it's overwhelming. It's, 
it just I it, like what we're hitting on about how life is changing so fast. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't know, like when I was a kid, the phone was stuck to the wall and right. comedians were telling jokes about how someday you're going to have that phone in your car and you'll right. be able to call the car in front and people would laugh and laugh. So, um, yeah, I don't, I wonder if there's ever been a time where society or sort of moved as fast as it has now. I don't know. I think that the Romans probably did, and that didn't work out too well for them. So it gives me caution. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, like, hey, hey, maybe we slow down a bit, y'all. I don't know. Maybe just turn to, off your phone idea. at night just to help it a right. little bit. <laughs> you know, and I started like I'm trying to sleep with it away from me, um, yeah. and I actually bought an alarm clock that, regrettably, has died a terrible death because I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. So RIP alarm clock, I have to get a new one. But my intent, I was so mad. I think there are still swears hanging over my house from that incident. But um, I, I wanted to, you know, just kind of wake up with alarm clock and start my day and then grab my phone. <clears throat> because it, I just feel like I would be, you know, a little calmer and a little less like, holy crap, I got emails last night. I need to answer them, you know? Right. And I, I don't like things being the boss of me. And I notice that my phone is very much the boss of me. Um, so I'm trying to minimize that, but it's really hard. You know, it's, it's tricky. You know, this is a weird offshoot, but I did, I did that. I stopped. I don't, I don't have, you know, I live alone. So I stopped kind of talking to everybody until I get on my bike when I go to yoga. But, Mm -hmm. um, I started meditating and keeping the news off and not going for the emails, which I, for everyone that sent me an email, I'm sorry, I'm so far behind, but it really does, uh, give you much more of a peaceful, um, start to your day, more of a foundation. So then here's the weird part. (laughs) So I've been meditating a half an hour every day and I'm focused on Claire Audient. I'm just trying to um get that. And uh it's almost like I have messed up the energy in my apartment. Things are falling, things are moving. It's very strange. Like I had to, I was almost, I know that's a powerful thing to do that every day, but it was mm-hmm. a very odd, look at how it's upsetting the dog outside my house. Um, I know. But um, yeah, I think that uh, actually getting control of your own energy um, really can change your whole day. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that like you do readings in your house all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty heavy in it in and of itself. I hate that expression because I always say it wrong, but it's it's a thing that uh, if you do readings a lot, your your place gets charged up with that energy. <clears throat> so I can imagine like you need to release it or or use some dragon's blood incense or something and just clean the hell out of it. Yeah, you know, I got some amazing, uh, Tommy left me some amazing dragon's blood oil for my place. And um, yeah, and I'm actually going to get some more because I wore it as sort of a, I was like, "Ah, I'll just put this on me today. People went bananas for it. It, really? It's such a unique sort of flowery smell. And yeah. uh, I was reading all over. I chased him down the other day and I couldn't get where he got it. And then he was like, oh, well, if you want more, just go here. So that's the place I was telling everyone I might go do the podcast with. I'm going to see if they can do a podcast because they mix nice. them there, which I believe would be an alchemist, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hopefully the guy's that's an alchemist. Cool. It's uh, So hopefully that's a podcast coming up, folks. So, uh, and one last question before we go to the break. So when people go to your uh, website, you have a lot of different readings offered. Um, any way uh, to give people to narrow that down or, sh- or is it okay if they pick one and it kind of goes a different way? Maybe give that a, give that a, 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 uh, explanation. That's the word I want. Yeah. I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that, um, emailing me first is always a good idea. If you're not sure, um, we can always do a general reading, general readings. I kind of <clears throat> just lay the cards down and look at the whole life and look at everything and see what we can do. But if they're not really sure if they want an element reading, which element reading is really three readings over a course of almost a year where uh, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and they start on this process. Like I had a woman who wanted to start her own business. So we started out uh, with find a mentor, get a business plan, find financing, et cetera. We talked again in the middle when she was having problems finding staff. And then we're about to have our last reading soon. It's been over a year. Her business is doing really well. 
And so our last reading is going to be like how to maintain that. Wonderful. So it's really, yeah, the element readings are really a process. And most folks will email me and say, I don't, I don't know what, you know, what should I pick for this situation? And then I can direct them kind of to the right one. Um, but I, I love doing general readings too, because sometimes you just need like, it's really hard to see the maze when you're in it, you know, right. It's really difficult. So what I do for my general readings, my phone readings and email is I just kind of look down at the life and see what is going on. And if they're missing anything or if there's anything they need to be super attentive to. Um, and that seems to be really helpful because it's like, kind of like taking, taking your, yourself into it for a checkup. And, uh, you know, like my, my car keeps making a squeaking noise every time I drive over 60. Well, I can find out what that noise is, but you have to fix it. Right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I have people who say, I keep dating. The, my favorite question about love was I keep finding and dating the same asshole in a different $900 suit. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. <laughs> and the answer wasn't try dating other people different people it was you need to stop dating for a while because you're trying to fill a hole in yourself that can't be filled with another person right so you need to heal that so that when you look for somebody you can also find somebody who's also whole and it won't matter what they're wearing and it won't matter what they they come across as they'll be whole as well Uh, and yeah yeah. that's a very hard when you have to look at someone and go yeah, you got to change. And they're like, that's not what I paid for. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. That's kind of the good thing about having the reputation that I have, um, wh- which is a tiny bit intimidating and incredibly honest. Yeah. Um, because I, I can't give a dishonest reading. It goes against everything I believe in. So if somebody has read about me or they've listened to me on a podcast or whatever, they know that I'm going to tell them exactly what's what's up. And if that means that they're, you know, being an idiot, I will say, honey, I love you so much. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, and it will. I have these these um, clients who are younger and they call me their tarot auntie. And I'm like, you know, I'm very honest with them, but also very loving. And um, I don't think that, you know, hedging if, if I don't know. My dad told me when I was a kid, I was like 22. And one of my friends said that I was a jerk. And didn't want to be friends anymore. So I called my dad crying and I was like, you know, so-and-so said I was a jerk and blah, blah, blah. And he said, honey, if one person tells you you're a jerk, ignore them. If two people tell you, you need to think about it for a second. If three people tell you that you're a jerk, you're a jerk. <laughs> and you need to figure your life out. And I think that that's one of the best lessons I've ever learned. And I've had periods of time where, you know, I've been acting like a complete ass and a couple of my friends are like, the fuck is wrong with you? Right. And, right. and it, it's that third time where I'm just like, Jesus Christ. So I kind of see myself as the third friend. You know, I'm the one that you come to when your friends are just like, no, you're OK. You're OK. But sometimes you're like this. And then they really want to know what's going on. They call me. And I'm like, honey, you're you're showing your ass and you need to behave. Right. So, and yeah. I want to I want to talk empathic energy with you when we come back. And also, you know what else, folks? Uh, honest does not always mean bad. Right. I think people get that confused and they think bad things. You're going to tell them terrible things or they come in scared. And it's just it's just no, it's life. a very loving thing. It's and a lot of times I tell people that they're OK. And that's a truth that's hard to hear. Right. You know, that there's nothing wrong with them and that they're fine and beautiful just as they are. And that's a different kind of truth that's really hard to hear. But I do it in a way that I hope is very loving. Um, either way, you know, I am whatever sure, I can't need. imagine you doing it any other way. Oh, <laughs> aren't you sweet? All right, folks, we'll be right back. Who do tarot readers go for tarot readings? They go to Melissa Sonova at melissasonova.com. She gave me the best reading a couple of months ago that is still resonating and helping me out now. She is authentic and to the point. You loved her on the podcast. She is the no BS tarot reader. She also has a tarot class online right now. Check it out. Just watching the promo, you will see how much fun you are going to have while you learn. Also, check out 
out her book, which is always right beside me when I'm doing my readings or my tarot card for me in the morning. It is called Kitchen Table Tarot, and you will love it. Melissa Sanova, that's M-E-L-I-S-S-A, C-Y-N-O-V-A. Check her out. All right, we're back. And Melissa, for all my uh, listeners and uh, uh, those, uh, you just hit on something perfect that I did see in your newsletter that I loved, uh, which by the way, sign up for her newsletter at melissasanova.com. Beautiful plug in there. Um, because, um, yes, empaths are having an awful hard time. Uh, give us some advice. And I do think that everyone is, is a little empathic and that it's a really great idea for everybody to get behind, you know, taking care of themselves. Um, but I kind of, again, I like to split things up into bite sized pieces, but I have, um, about the emotional ways you can take care of yourself, the physical ways. And I think the physical one gets ignored the most because everybody goes on and on about self care. The self care is not getting a pedicure. Self care right. is not to say that you're eating every day, that you're sleeping, that, um, you're taking your medicine if you need it, that you're moving your body as much as you're able, like, the, the physical self, like, or the meat sack, um, I ignore mine all the time because I'm a very, uh, I like to read and I like to do readings and I like to, you know, hang out with my kids, but that's not moving. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I have to actively bring attention to my physical self to make sure that I'm okay. And the reason this is important for empaths is that if my physical self is kind of wonky, I am so sensitive to everything around me. You know, I can't stay balanced. I can't keep other people from eating me like energetically. I can't, I don't have the boundaries that I usually do because I don't feel good, you know, or I'm not as strong as I usually am. And it's, it's like kind of scary that, you know, I was what, 18 and in a dorm of hundreds of college age girls and completely had no boundaries and no no walls up. I had no meditation practice. I had nothing. I thought I was going to go crazy. And because I felt so overwhelmed, I became an alcoholic and I drank my way through the nineties. So there are better ways to deal with it than that. And the best one is just breathing. You know, that's the best medicine. It's just taking a deep breath and centering yourself and, and figuring out what you can deal with right now. Like I can't deal with this Yahoo in the white house right now, but what I can do Like I I did a fundraiser for trans kids in St. Louis because that's a really important thing to me. That's what I can do. I raised, you know, we raised nine hundred dollars for for the Metro Trans Umbrella Group here in St. Louis, which was fantastic. That's That's what I can do to work against that energy. You know, right? Yeah. And I can take a deep breath. I can spend time with my kids. I can make sure they know they're loved. Um, I can think about the things that are bothering me and see if I should I internalize this or should I just like, let it go? Is it mine or is it someone else's? And so there are lots yeah. of ways to sort through it. That question I like a lot. Is it mine or is it someone else's? Boy, you get a lot of text messages, don't you? <laughs> I do. I'm so sorry. Oh. sorry. They're just kind of in the background, but, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, the, yeah. the, uh, um, uh, the other thing about, it not being a uh, pedicure. It's not yeah. internet shopping. Now, I'm a very, very physical person. I ride my bike to yoga every day. And mm-hmm. it's very interesting because um, that or getting outside or holding onto a tree, all kinds of grounding stuff like that. And yeah. I have not had a real issue with empathic stuff uh, also because I was a runner. And I do mm-hmm. think that that's great that you brought that up because it is actually a time of whether it's meditation or something physical like that. Uh, and it's a weird thing because massage is great. That's a kind of self care, but it's Mm -hmm. not, I feel like what you're saying there, I really get it that even just stamping your feet on the ground outside or taking a walk or being in your body. Um, I can't say enough good things about yoga, but you know, everybody doesn't have that. I have that energy and that's what I do. But even if somebody got a 10 minute yoga tape off of uh, YouTube, it makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, one thing that I always remind my clients and I honestly remind myself is that I need to stay in the skin I'm in. 
Like I need to be right here. There's stuff that needs my attention right here. And if I'm in the past with regret or I'm in the future with worry, I only am giving right now half of my attention, you know, and it sounds like a fucking embroidered pillow. Right. But it's really important to be mindful and to be present and um, to feel like you're in your body. You know, my cat very much agrees. I don't know if you could hear oh, it. I can. Awesome cat. <laughs> um, you know, that's funny because I did, I was talking to Sonia, uh, my animal communicator friend, and there was something happened with courage and it wasn't a big deal, but I said, you know, I feel terrible. And she was like, why? And it's, uh, that wasn't your fault. And I was like, yeah, but I wasn't present. And some of that is even, um, you know, when I walk him, of course, people around my complex are not putting their dogs on leashes. He can't be near other dogs. And if I'm looking at my phone and another dog comes up and I don't catch it, that's me not being present. So sometimes, right. you know, I took the Facebook and the Twitter off the phone and I can, me too. yeah, I mean, you can get it if you need to through your browser, but it's more work and I don't do it. And I think the symbology of that has been about being present. And yeah. That, I started reading books again, like actual paper books again, after I took those two things off my phone, wow. I hadn't realized that I didn't have a book in my hand because I listen to audio books all the time. Yeah. But I hadn't had an actual book in my hand for years. I just didn't do it. And it makes me so happy now just to sit. That's one of my favorite things, to sit under a lamp with some tea and read a book. And that's so funny because you write books. I know. And here I was, like, excusing myself from my favorite activity because who who updated one on Facebook, which is just stupid, you know? Right. And I, I like being on it because I like I meet new clients that way, and I love staying in touch with my family and friends because they're everywhere. But I don't have to be married to it. Right. I don't have to live in it. And that's what I was doing. So I made a choice, a conscious choice to remove the stuff from my phone because I want to live here. I don't want to live on my phone. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that, you know, finding a good balance with I love technology. I fucking love it. I love social media. It's like my favorite thing. In small doses, you know, right. morning and night, once in the morning. Yep. And night. I, I'm actually exactly. taking a, a big break before 2020, 20, I think in 2020, I'm going to unveil a lot, but I've sort of, sort of pulled it back for now and I'm regrouping. Um, but, uh, okay. So the physical part, we got that. Any other tips you want to throw in for people that are having empathic trouble? I think that, um, we talked about identifying whether or not it's yours. Another important part of that is identifying whether or not it's important important enough to ruin your day. So I saw this thing that said, did you have a bad day or did you have a bad 10 minutes? And I think that that's a really important part. Like I can't stand malls or I don't go shopping a lot because I don't like people around me that much. Mm -hmm. It gives me a headache. And, but I'll go into, you know, target and be like, Jesus Christ, you know, (laughs) they're everywhere. Ah, And I'll freak out and I'll come out in a bad mood. And then I'll keep that bad mood for the rest of the day. And it affects my kids and my husband and my family, you know, but what I could do instead was, is put on my earbuds before I go in, listen to a book while I'm shopping, get the fuck out as fast as I can and then go about my day. But what I'm doing is, is submerging myself in things that make me uncomfortable and not expecting them to have an effect and then letting that effect carry on and spread like poison, Right. you know? So there are ways that you can, make sure that you only have a bad or uncomfortable 10 minutes instead of a bad day. And, um, I've been, you know, trying to do that more often. And I got to say, I'm a lot happier. Um, another thing that I, that I learned, I, I listen to podcasts a lot and I heard this thing that, um, they said, you don't have to react to every stupid thought that goes through your mind. And it knocked me on my ass. I was like, seriously, I don't have to overreact or chew on things forever. Seriously. (laughs) I don't have to take things personally. And, um, and I'm the kind of person, like if, if something hurts my feelings or affects me, I can't stop thinking about it. You know, it's in my head, but with this mindfulness technique, you can like observe the thought and go, yep, that happened. And then just go about your day. You know, you don't have to absorb it. You don't have to hold on to it and make it yours. You just acknowledge it and go, "Mm mm-hmm nothing I can do about it. And then just keep on trucking. And it makes me so much happier and it makes it so much easier to be in my body, you know, yeah. instead of yeah. just gnawing on a, the bone of something and then sucking the marrow out and then making a necklace of the bone. 
And I'm just like, wearing it forever. I, yes, yeah, exactly. This is mine forever. You can't have my bad feeling. Like, what's the point of that? There's yeah. no point. And and people feel the other thing is, and it's so interesting. I have a friend that's um, literally dying of something, and the spiritual part of it is that she can't let go of control, mm-hmm. and it's it's so. Uh, it's so much and I'm watching this and I'm asking myself, where in my life do I, am I holding too much control where, you know, I, I, it's almost funny. I'm breaking it down for something I do on my tarot card of the day class. But, um, I feel like the, w- there's things we think have to be immediate that do not. It's like medium and buddy of mine, Terry Huberman is with me today. Terry, you've given me so many great readings and healings, and now you've got everything together in one package. Tell me about that. I sure do. So this package has energy healings, readings, and coaching. Coaching. That's the best. And, and people, uh, they buy the package. You give them coaching once a week? Yeah. So we meet online once a week and in between their support as well. And, and who would this be for? This is really for folks who are in indecision, needing to get into their intuition because they're blocked or stuck. They need to move forward. And so we explore what the root causes of the problems are. And helps them get out of their own way. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Terrific. And what can they expect from this? Sure. So moving from anxiousness to confidence, accessing their freedom, joy, and security, and really being in alignment with themselves so they have that clear direction, so they know, aha, this is what I need to do next to reach my goals. So now there's something that's free so people can talk to you and see if this is for them. Yeah, absolutely. On my website, terryhuberman.com, there is a... uh, a page where you can click and it's the intuitive coaching package. And there is a button there that says schedule a free call. So you go ahead, schedule it. We'll get on a call and you can learn more about this program and we'll see if this is a good fit for you. Or not. See if there's chemistry. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> it's an odd date. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Huberman.com. T E R R I E H U B E R M A N. I highly recommend it folks. Okay. So now I, uh, what is your process when you sit down to do a reading? So I kind of learned wrong. I, I white knuckled my way into being a really good tarot reader because I used to do readings in the back of cars on the way to concerts while drunk smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and that's not an ideal way to touch, get in touch with spirit, if you will. Um, but because I learned in such a rough way, I can read anytime, anywhere, in any conditions. Um, it's fine. But I found that it's easier and I have smoother readings if I like sit down in the same place and Mm -hmm. take a deep breath, you know. So what I usually do is I go to my room with my dog who insists on being with me when we do readings. And um, I ask the person to take a deep breath and tell me when to quit shuffling because I only do phone readings. I don't do in person. Um, And then they tell me when to quit shuffling. And then I asked, I cut in three and I asked them to tell me which pile to read from. And then I throw down six cards and I just kind of give an overview. Like I don't ask any questions first. And then after I'm finished with that, if there are any questions after that, um, then we start asking specific questions and pulling three cards at a time to answer those specific questions. A lot of the times though, the first part turns into a conversation and we're, you know, that handles all of it. Right. Um, but it's a very conversational kind of reading because I don't like, I mean, this is not my life I'm talking about. This is someone else's life, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that it's in my best interest to give them as much space as I can within their own reading to say, you know, I, I think that this means this. And I'm like, it's, you know, if it's your reading and you feel this card is about your mother-in-law instead of about you, then that's probably what it is. So then we'll just kind of shift gears a little bit. Um, And dig in. That's what I say. Dig in. Yeah, but it becomes like a conversation in which I can offer up different perspectives and then they can bounce them back to me with a different angle. And it's really cool. It's a really cool conversation. So I have very conversational readings. And then afterwards, everybody gets homework. Like everybody. I've only had a couple where their readings are like five minutes. And I'm literally like, you're fine. Why did you call me? And they're like, I just needed to know everything was okay. And I'm like, yep. And that's it. That's the reading. Five minutes. Um, but after, after the reading, I will tell somebody now your homework is you need to, uh, start sleeping better. Go talk to the doctor. You need to, 
um, avoid phone calls with your sister because that bitch crazy. You need to, you know, whatever. Mm, yeah. And and I give them their homework and then that's it. And I get follow up sometimes, but sometimes it's years later. Like I saw someone at a bar a couple of weeks ago and they said, you gave me a reading like five years ago and I didn't remember at all. I said, oh, cool. And she goes, you changed my life. And I'm like, holy shit. I did. I don't remember doing that, but it, I was there with her. I was present in the reading. I was supporting her. And then I took off from the reading because it wasn't mine anymore. You know, and right. I, I loved that. I loved that I didn't remember something that changed someone's life because it's not about me. It's about the information that's transmitted. And I think that is, I think sometimes when you're channeling information, it mm-hmm. doesn't stay. It goes through. Yeah, absolutely. If it stays, like I used to, it, it used to hang on me like crazy because I thought it was my responsibility to fix the person. Um, Cause I've been reading for 30 years and like 15 of those, I was an idiot. And um, <laughs> I learned like in the last 15 years, how to set up really good boundaries around myself and the people that I serve and the people that I read for their problems, not my problems, right. their trauma, not the trauma. And I, the cards act as kind of a shield so that I don't absorb any of that stuff. That's none of my business. You know, know? that's something because I know whenever I run into psychics or psychic teachers, they always kind of want to talk about tarot like it's a cane or it's something that you lean on. But I have even found in paranormal investigation, I would rather have the tarot cards as a barrier. Uh-huh. Than to go right at something, and and exactly. and I sometimes I think tarot readers get looked down on, and I have a friend that's always like, "Well, we can do what you can do, but you can't do what we can do." And I'm like, first of all, I'm like, okay, that's not a competition. Uh, but second of all, there's an <laughs> I'm art. More yeah, there's an art to tarot that I don't think people get all the time. Just as with yeah. anything, and um, but I do like like what you said. It's a um, sometimes I'm shuffling the. Card cards and putting them out and I, and it's not about the cards. I literally think I'm doing psychic work and the cards are just shuffling. yeah, it's about doing yeah. something or or like that. So I always I always think that now mediumship um do you do mediumship? I I do. I have accidentally um which my friend George Corey is a medium and he thinks it's so funny that I've had these mediumship experiences by accident because he's a professional medium. Um, and and, and uh, for folks that don't know the difference, mediums speak to the dead, psychic are working with uh, future. Uh, yeah. I mean, ideally, right? Yeah. But there have been times where, I don't know if I told you about this. I was reading for this this person um, and she was upset. Like her mother died and her dad was asking her to go over and clean his house and cook food for him. And she's like, I have my own house and it's 20 minutes away. And And I heard really loudly, you're not his goddamn slave. And I was like, there's nobody behind me, Mm -hmm. right? And I heard it over my left shoulder. And in my head, I see this woman shaking her fist, right? And I'm like, okay, ignore that. Ignore the voices in your head, Sonova. This is not the time. And then again, over and over, I hear, you know, he was a son of a bitch when I was alive. And he's a son of a bitch now. And you're not his goddamn maid. And I was like, (laughs) wait, hold on. And so I told this to the client and she burst into tears and went, mom. Uh, and but it, that was a total accident. I thought I was losing it. <laughs> so sometimes I, I do hear things. I have had a reading where I heard the word rib and I asked the person, does that mean anything? And she said her, um, she showed me the tattoo on her arm R E B, which were her grandfather's initials. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So there, there have been things like that. But if I'm honest, I'm a big chicken. I'm not trying to have, you know, uh, the Whoopi Goldberg ghost experience. That is not something that I'm aiming for. Right. But I I can do it. And sometimes I think it happens just because there's no other way to comfort that person. You know, so I think that sometimes spirit barges in and is like, say this, you know, because it'll make them feel better. And nothing that I could do with my cards will have that same effect, you know. Yep. And and I also I also feel like too there's some uh they always say there's two ways of mediums. There's the one that's the direct conversation and then there's sometimes psychically picking up off of the person Mm-hmm. that spirit or what that spirit is trying to say. Um, yeah. And again, it's one of those weird things where people judge which one is better. And I'm just like, it's all information. It's, it really is. And I think that, 
you know, I don't need to measure my psychic dick against anybody else's. I know, I know, right? That's really what it is. <laughs> and if someone can get better information from the I Ching versus tarot cards, fantastic. Go That's for great. It. That's a tool that works for you. I can't use Rin cards. The first time I tried, I picked up two of them and the person said, those mean no and don't. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> noted. Uh-huh. And I put them back down, you know. But once you find a tool that helps you do your job better, good job. Way to go. You know, right. well done you. And right. I don't really need to have a psychic off to prove that I, you know, know what I'm doing. So, but yeah. that's, you know. <laughs> I looked at, uh, there were these, uh, I, I, sometimes I'll take uh, the classes online. There's some of them that are really cheap. Like this one lady did, a, uh, it was like a psychic medium class and it was like $12. And I was like, all right, I'll, I want to see if there's, you know, for $12, maybe there's one piece of information or something I can use. It was so basic though. I don't, I didn't finish it, but mm-hmm. she, um, she was saying tarot is so complicated. That's a different class. And I was like, okay, I get that. Um, and she but she said, uh, tarot cards are only like 400 years old. And I was like, what? Uh, yeah. I, I actually f- keep reading where they go back further and further. I don't know if she needs the rider deck, but I was like. Yeah. There w- I think it's like 1400s, I think. Yeah. It, it w- oh, I kept reading that every time they find one, they find one behind it. It's almost like the, yeah. uh, you know, the text. Every time they find one, they think this is the first. It goes back further and further, but yeah, I thought, wow. I think that that's probably true, you know, because we don't know all that we think that we know. Right. The, the right. thing that I always remember when it comes to, like, guessing about antiquity is there there was Roman or graffiti from a long time ago, and they thought it was a sacred symbol, and they finally interpreted it and said something like, Hadrian was here, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, so <laughs> so you think that you know because you're looking through all of these years, but I, I don't, I don't know. All I know is what I've been told, and what I've been told might be wrong, so right. um, I, I, I fear people who tell me they know everything. They right. scare me to death. Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so Melissa, uh, I know we're a little off uh, tarot and readings, but um, have you ever had ghost experiences or paranormal experience? Because you're not that interested in the uh, like paranormal investigation, am I right? No, I'm not, it, and it's not because I'm I'm fascinated by it, and I think it's I like I like watching your stuff, but it scares me, and I can only watch like two minutes of it because I I'm terrified of things that might be. Like, that looks like a place where you're going to get grabbed and strangled in blood and gore and blah. And my brain just takes off with that. And so I can't pursue it. And also as a social worker for 20 years, I've seen some bad shit and I don't need to see more bad shit. Right. right. I'm good. I'm solid on the bad things. Um, but I, I just I'm extremely sensitive, which is a good thing because I'm a tarot reader and I'm meant to be. But the side effect of that is that I'm scared so easily. And so I don't watch, but I have seen, I saw both of my grandpas after they died and that was wonderful. Um, They both came to talk to me after I had my daughter and they both talked about how pretty she was and and that I did a good job and that I almost joined them, you know, because I almost died having my kid. And uh, yeah, and they were like, oh, that was a close one. We didn't want you to join us, right? And so that was lovely. And then the other day, I think my grandma was here because I felt somebody pat my arm and she always used to pat me. And I was just thinking about her. Um, so I've had things like that, but I've never had something like that I couldn't explain or that wasn't my ancestors reassuring me, you know? Right. Um, and I think it's because like anybody can can do this. Anybody can see spirits. Anybody can, you don't have to be special or, but I have such big shields put up because I do empathetic work constantly. And I do probably 10 readings a week and I'm open to this stuff all the time. My shields, when I'm done in the psychic realms, I'm done. Slam, you know, right. the door is shut. I am completely finished. And, um, it's, I think that that keeps it away from me is that ability to go. Nope. Not today, not in my house. Like I always used to tell my kids, um, the scariest thing in this house is your mother. <laughs> and because they were afraid of ghosts, I'm like, ghosts don't come into this house. They're not going to fuck with your mother. It's not happening. Do right. not be afraid because this is not a possibility. And we've never had a problem here. And my kids are both really psychic. 
and they're both very active um, and very sensitive. But we don't have problems here because I've decided that we're not going to. And I put up boundaries so that we're not going to. And that is actually a consensus of a lot of psychics and tarot readers and mediums that I know. I know mediums don't want to go ghost hunting, which is interesting because that's sort of what they do. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and it is, there is something to that. And I have run into darker things where, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know what I feel like now? This is what's so funny. So I always wanted a ghost show. I wanted a comedy ghost show, but nobody wanted that. So I was always kind of looking for a ghost show. And just recently after certain events, I was like, yeah, I don't think I want that for a couple of reasons. Uh, Mm -hmm. one of them being, there is no, these people are not funny you know what i mean like there's no joking it's very i don't know if i want to spend a week in a location with people that don't want to laugh at all or i can't be funny or i started to go you know that doesn't it's not appealing to me if i can't do it the other way i don't want to do it this month four people from ghost shows do you have a pilot do you have a sizzle reel can you be and i was like okay whatever the universe is going to take me wherever it's going to take me yeah but i do feel like um I don't, uh, I also took a parapsychology class and it's, it's not, I don't, I'm not feeling it as a hobby anymore. I feel yeah. it to help out other things, which is interesting because it now has gone away from, uh, is there a ghost in the house to things like experiencing someone sick from a hungry ghost or, yeah. um, different stuff like that. So I guess I'm supposed to be learning something here, but it's interesting too, cause I kind of like scary movies, but I cannot take the ones that are too graphic now because no. I know that's real. Yeah. That can show up. And you know what I mean? If they're too yeah. visual, I can't, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to go there anymore. I was talking with this guy, um, who's actually a reader and he's also, uh, he d- used to do like, um, ghost stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And his name is on the top of my tongue, but, um, I got a reading from him and he was like, once you've seen one bleeding wall, you've seen them all. And I could not stop laughing because he'd been doing this since he was a kid. Like yeah. his, his family was involved in this and all his whole family is, uh, is still involved in it. But he's like, you know, it gets to a point where you're just like, uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Seen it. Seen. Oh, you're pulling your face off. How great. I've seen that too. And I think that I could never get to that place where it's just like something that I do it because it scares me too much. But I also think that, you know, there are people out there who are built for this. And I'm like, I will watch seven seconds of your show and be so proud of you. And then that's it. I have to turn it off. (laughs) Well, you know what's funny, too? And I don't mean this about any particular person or particular show. Because I I, I will always enjoy ghost adventures. And people will ask me if they're faking it or they're not. And it's like, you know what? I don't care. I know that there's a producer that is going to tell you how this is going to end. Uh, so, you know, it may be, it may not be whatever, but I thoroughly enjoy the show and, yeah, absolutely. and, uh, but some people are going in, uh, and, and, uh, actually I'm going to do another, um, podcast with, uh, Ryan Singer. Oh, cool. I like that one. He's, well, he's great, but we're both talking about, you know, some people that are running in there, like, I just want to see something or I want to see something dark or I want to see something negative or it's kind of like. You know what? Don't. Yeah. Don't. That's well, I, learn your yeah. craft, learn your protection, and tread carefully. I'm not saying don't do it, but the people be careful. Yeah. And the people that are aggressively going after things like Zach does, well, if you know the you know, ask Zach how where that got him other than the show. Because right. there's some dark stuff out there, and sometimes if it sticks to you it sticks to you and you'll be out of the business for good or yeah. you're going to have it with you all the time. So I think there's, and I try to talk about protection a lot on this. And uh, I think Ryan and I both had some darker experiences that I want to do a podcast with him talking about that. So I know some of you are just happy listening to the stories and that is safe. God bless you. Um, but for those of you that are running in, well, probably those people aren't listening to my podcast because my, <laughs> my podcast sort of goes between ghost hunting and spiritual and metaphysical 
levels. So um, they probably are not listening. But for those of you that are, you know, you just want to be careful. Um, cause, yeah. cause even the part, the bad thing that I got involved with, uh, it wasn't presented that way. And then I got there and it was like, shit. And I knew. And I, yeah, knew. I have, um, I, I have a friend who went hiking. He went like, I don't hike, but I'm sure it was great. But he was like, mm-hmm. um, he went up to the highest point that he could go to and set up his thing. And he, he said, I wanted to see God. I wanted God to see me. Right. That's what I wanted. And he said all night, it felt like there was a gigantic eyeball pointed at him intently. Can you imagine? And he's like, I couldn't get comfortable. I was afraid to breathe wrong. I felt like I was being scrutinized by God all night. And I'm like, yeah, be careful what you wish for, man. Right. Because going and respectfully, you know, enjoying what we have in nature is great, but going to the highest point and saying, look at me, look at me, but maybe you'll get what you want. And maybe you won't like it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's it also, you know, there's something about the human ego. Uh, and this is something that I, that probably was one of the things that brought me into the paranormal because we seem to think, well, there's uh, demons and ghosts and us and God. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 there's so many levels of different things. And I think, I don't believe that we just cross over and reach to God. I don't think it's that easy. I think it's more complicated. And I think um, that's quite an ego to think, well, we get an immediate seating with God. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, he, well, I'm glad waiting. you got my message, God, because I have a couple things to say to you. Yeah, I know. I think <laughs> my... My idea of God is like that's the interconnectedness of all of us. That's where God is, yes. and I do think that there that God presents Himself, Herself, itself to folks in ways that they can best understand, and I think that's cool. But I also think if you don't vibe on that, that's cool. I don't think that anybody who would make such beautiful things in the world would be mad at you for not believing in them because I don't think their ego is that big, right? So, um, but I think that that demanding whether it's spirits or the spirit pay attention to you and do what you want is really shitty behavior. Like it, even let's say it's not even supernatural. If I walked in front of you and was like, Karen, Karen, pay attention to me right now. I've got a camera, Karen, you would probably pop me in the mouth and I would deserve it. You know? Right. So I think manners are a good thing. <laughs> like, and, and with ghost hunting general. and with ghost hunting, those of you that are going in and provoking, that's like provoking a person you can't see. You oh, can't see. And um, it it is. And I and I I think it's very interesting that your friend that experience, because I think sometimes when we do meet, I don't know if it's meeting God or meeting the next level. Yeah, it is about reflecting of who are you? Mm -hmm. Who, Who what did you believe? Who are like the that kind of thing. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's almost, it's all like, I keep saying this on the podcast to, that we also think that whatever they are, fairies, elementals, uh, that they're working on our moral ethnic, you know, on our moral plane. Like they're like, right. well, yes, we would love to say thank you for the gift you've given us. No, 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 no. We have, our ego is making that. Those are different beings. It's like going to a different country and them having different rules. They're not going to follow yeah. your rules because you're the American that came to wherever, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I, so I always find that, um, that interesting. I, I have a friend and I'm, um, I have a couple of people that I'm watching go through some karmic stuff and sometimes it, it breaks our, um, you know, we Americans really do, uh, and I don't, not that I'm the, that the, speaking internationally, but we've been programmed to a happy ending or, yeah. uh, that a doctor can fix anything or, yeah. uh, isn't there a pill for that? And there's an un- uncomfortableness about life. I remember my tarot teacher, uh, she goes to India every year and she, uh, she was a big follower of Sai Baba. And one year, mm-hmm. I can't remember if she got, um, I, I don't know. It was a, uh, one of the disease where you're so, uh, her fever was like off the charts and, oh. um, it wasn't malaria. It was something else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, while these women in India are trying to make her better and she's like in a tent 
and they have wet cloths and like that's all there is. Right. And they're telling her, God must love you so much because he, or he knows you can make it through or something like, you know, let's be honest. A lot of us have harder lives than perhaps the Kardashians, although I don't know them, but it's like, the belief that you send your, you know what I mean? It's not that you can, I don't believe that thing that says God will only send you as much as you can handle. But it's like, if this life is about learning lessons and getting to the next phase, some of it is physical pain. Some of it is being grateful when you're in the worst situation, which is easy for me to say, because I'm not sick or, you know what I mean? There's, there's something to, we all think it's supposed to be like this. Or have you ever read for someone like this? Well, I'm a good person. Why don't I have someone? Why is God doing this to me? Yes. Which I, I was that person when I was younger. And yeah, I, I think we all were, you know, I asked what I was writing the book and I wrote about what a dumbass I was in my twenties. Um, and I asked my friend Sarah Kate, I was going through this like existential, why didn't I love myself? And why did I look to other people to validate me? And she goes, Oh honey, you were in your twenties. We all did that. Right. So, <laughs> but right. I think that it's, it goes back to that, um, to ego and it goes back to, um, asking the wrong questions, you know? Yeah. Good things don't happen because you're a good people. Bad things don't happen because you're a bad person. I can talk. Um, things happen and how you deal with it is, is whether or not, you know, you've got character or not. It's, I've had a grandfather die. I am sure that lots of people have, but if you take that and internalize it and turn it into poison and hurt other people because you're angry, that's not the best choice. Right. But if you honor him and release the grief and, and do all of the things that feel good to you, and that will honor his memory, that feels better, you know? So it's, it's not really about good or bad. It's about what you choose to do with what happens, you know? Yeah. And getting, I've seen people, yeah, I've seen folks lose their job and be like, I wonder what the universe has in store for me. And I'm like, how the fuck can you be here already? That just <laughs> happened. I would be drinking tequila and swearing at everybody and making sure that everybody knew it wasn't my fault. And, you know, some people can just get there faster. And I think that that's a great goal is to be able to look around yourself and say, you know what, this is going to be fine. I've yep. gotten through more stuff yep. and I'll get through this too. And it's, it's admirable. And I think that I'm getting there, but I'm sure it's all not there all the way. No, no. And it's easy to do. Like I said, it's easy for me to say right now, cause I'm not sick or I don't have cancer right. or I don't have whatever, but I will say this, even when I get down or things, you know, cause things are not perfect, but to go down and look at a tree and go, thank you for giving me a moment with this tree or the energy yeah. or even talking to the trees. I know uh, uh, some of us is like, Hey, this is so cool. It's nature. The sun's out rains falling because we don't know what is coming you know yeah uh, it's all about that mindfulness it's all about being in the skin you're in you know it's about saying yeah this is happening and i'm still here and i still have you know i had double pneumonia a couple months ago like pneumonia in both lungs and i have asthma so that was a fucking treat and right in the middle of it my peonies bloomed like bright pink right out my window and I'm like, okay, so I have pneumonia and this sucks and I can't walk up the stairs without needing an inhaler, but look at these flowers. They're yeah. so pretty and they're right in front of me and I get to enjoy them every day, wow. you know, and it didn't make it suck less. It didn't make me, you know, I did wasn't cons- like instantly cured, but it did alleviate some of the Stuff. sadness that I had and some of the suck. Yeah, it still sucked, but it sucked less. You know, right, right. Okay, so now tell everybody in LA about October 12th. Oh, yeah, October 12th. I'm coming to Los Angeles. I'm doing um, private readings during the day, and I'm already almost booked out, which is really cool, but also Great. kind of like, holy shit. Um, and then I'm doing private parties at night, and the parties I'm really excited about because it's like you and 10 of your friends, and I hang out for three hours and read for everybody. And I also bring along like uh, oracle cards and pendulums for people to play with while I'm reading for other people, which is like amazing because these people have never generally touched cards before and oracle decks anybody can use without any training at all. And um, they just ask a question and pull an oracle card and the conversations that come from those amongst friends is amazing. It's just amazing. That's great. Um, So yeah, it's a super fun night. And um, you can find it at melissasanova.com. That's how you sign up. 
but um, I'm, I'm thrilled. I love Los Angeles. I've been there in like 15 years and I just dig it. I know. So. And you're right by my house and I am out of town when you're here. I know that's complete bullshit. That by the is, way. you know, what's funny back on one conversation. I I'm so lucky that um, when I go on the road, uh, my friend Tommy, the demonologist, stays at my place. So mm-hmm. that's how I keep my place clean every time oh, he nice. comes. And then we switch off. I smell the dragon's blood. I go, oh, this Tommy's cleared it out. Everybody's gone. It's Thank you. It's <laughs> nice to have a demonologist in your pocket. That's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, he's the best. He's like, thanks for letting me stay. And I'm like, thanks for cleaning up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's wonderful. Fantastic. And folks, sign up for Melissa's uh, email. It's it's terrific every time it comes. I Aww. I love reading it. Um, the book is Tarot Elements. The other book is uh, Kitchen Table Tarot. Uh, just a, a question: Are you making your own deck? I you know what? Okay, so I'm I'm doing working on a deck with Maggie Stiefvater right now. Uh, that's called the Scorpio Sea Tarot, and I'm writing a book called Kitchen Table Magic that actually you inspired. Oh, um, yeah, because you said I always want to do magic, but it always just seemed like difficult it always seemed hard and i'm like no it's easy um so the dogs are really excited about that book oh, I can't and wait. then um <laughs> and then next year i'll be working on my own deck which is kind of intimidating but also super exciting i know so yeah I, mean, I get to direct all of it that's great and, i've been toying yeah. with that idea but i'm not quite sure yet what i want it to be but uh that's fantastic well then you just come on when any one of those are done um, I could literally talk to you forever. I know. So, yeah, I think you're one of my favorite people out that are walking the planet. And anytime you want me to run my mouth about anything, you got me. Oh, ditto, my friend. And thank you so much for being on again. And uh, next time you're in Los Angeles, or let's just say uh, Paranormal Karen's thinking of coming to St. Louis. Next year, is, hey. uh, next year the big changes start. Uh, awesome. So hopefully we'll be there in person. Awesome. Yay! Let's All, do right. It. All right, my friends, that's melissasanova.com. And just like it sounds, and it's in the show notes. And thanks for listening. If you could leave me a five star review, that would be great. I will see you in Ann Arbor in October. Uh, tarot card of the day on Facebook. Check out karenrontowski.com, get a reading, whatever. All good, folks. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>